Welcome to the Advanced Sports Analytics Show here on Roto Grinders, brought to you by Jock Market. Stop throwing your money away. It's time to check out Jock Market, the app where daily fantasy becomes a stock exchange. Buy and sell shares of players in real time for real money. Download now for a 100% deposit match up to 50 bucks using the promo code GRINDERS. And get this. If you don't turn a profit this week, Jock Market is running back their first market guarantee to cover your losses this week. So download Jock Market in the app or play stores or check out jockmarket.com. That's J-O-C-K-M-K-T.com. And use the code GRINDERS for a 100% deposit match up to $50 on your first deposit. I'm Jordan Cooper, a.k.a. Blender Ed, Blender HD. If you want to follow me there on Twitter. And uh, joined by the man behind the numbers, the the the, the high powered computers that uh, hopefully hopefully this week have been able to, to spit out the numbers uh, in time and not to, to see that wheel going on the computer for for hours upon end. Uh, the, the, the man behind the numbers at Advanced Sports Analytics, Stuart Gibson, uh, and we finally we we finally get to a week where we have uh, we have some games that have. Uh, that are pretty high totals in comparison to the rest of them. Yeah, um, really, I mean, two games standing out uh, above the field. I think one I like a good bit and I'm inclined to kind of uh, try to be overweight on and the other, uh, I don't know, I have kind of a lukewarm feel for one side and kind of a, you know, one of the minus, I guess, if you will, uh, for the other side. Um, yeah, I mean, I was looking through kind of just uh, teams, players, and um Saw some spots that just like on on paper look uh, look interesting, but uh, it does feel like kind of pricing is pretty efficient this week. Like there are a few uh, guys that are really standing out as just like slam dunk plays. As where last week, you know, we had uh, uh, a handful of roster spots that uh, you know could be filled out with kind of high confidence uh, value plays. Uh, just looking at ownership, kind of at at the jump, uh, it seems to be fairly flat so like not um at least the outset not seeing like super clear uh targets or players that that we want to seek to leverage against i guess maybe you know aj Dillon figures to rack up a good bit of ownership but uh i don't know so you know so some of these some of these guys that I kind of I, I might be interested in looking at uh are you know, priced pretty efficiently and uh definitely have to have like uh cost sensitivity on some of these things so um yeah looking forward to talking it through with you yeah i think i think we're both going to come to agreement on the on the same thing so let's start with the highest total game on the slate by far uh it is the cowboys at the chiefs it is a 56 total so this is five and a half points higher than any of the other games on the slate uh the chiefs are currently favored at uh two and a half points 29 and a half implied team total for the chiefs 26 and a half for the Cowboys. Uh, we still have to get news on what's going to be happening with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Uh, with him back, obviously that'll take uh, kind of maybe Daryl Williams out of the picture, maybe both of the running backs out of the picture. Uh, based on our current uh, gridiron IQ projections, we have uh, the Chiefs side projecting fairly well with Mahomes, Hill, Kelsey at tight end. Obviously, very expensive type of stack. Uh, the Cowboys side is priced a little bit better, but there's a lot more options on the Cowboys side. It feels as if the, a lot of the ownership will be going towards the Chiefs and Hill. Uh, maybe not as much Kelsey at his price at 7,100, but uh, he could be a differential there. Uh, the question comes in to this is that if this is a high score and competitive game, uh, what are the what are the players on the Cowboys that you could play? Because you have Cooper, you got Lamb, you got Gallup, you got Schultz. You obviously have Ezekiel Elliott there, but he's kind of priced up at 7,700. 
Uh, for a 56 total game, is it weird for me to say that based on the pricing of the players on both sides of the ball, this is assuming that Clyde edwards Hilaire is back. So I almost prefer Daryl Williams at 5,400 more than any other player in this game. But if CEH is back, uh, I'm, get, I'm getting the sense that this game may be over-owned. And even if it does hit its total, the production could be spread out enough that none of the Cowboys receivers are necessary. Elliott isn't necessary. And maybe you can just get away with playing something like a Tyreek Hill or a Kelsey one-off. And from a price perspective, do better with another stack in your life. Interesting. I it it sounds like we might have like uh, kind of polar opposite uh, views. Oh, of, so we're oh I, we're not on the same page. Oh, I thought we yeah, were going to be mean, on the same page. Yeah, I I think it's worth. I mean, not to jump ahead, but uh, you know, naturally, kind of want to compare this game to the Cincinnati Las Vegas game. Uh, just. Two okay, ties. so so you th- so you think we're because I thought we were going to be on the same side that you would be lower on this game, and I would and and be higher on the the Bengals Raiders game because that's that's where I am. Interesting. But it feels it feels to me based on the numbers that you're seeing on like top stack potential that you see that this game that this game is even at high at higher ownership it's not high enough on. Yeah, I mean, do you? I I don't know the the numbers I'm seeing suggest that the the Cincinnati Las Vegas game might be higher owned. I mean, I think like T Higgins, uh, Boyd Waller could be the highest owned tight end. Like to me, that seems like a game that might catch more ownership. Um, at least like from what I'm seeing, I think uh, y'all's ownership stuff, I think is also in agreement with that from, from what I'm looking at. Uh, and like, if, if that's the case, I, I, to me, like, you know, higher total game. I know the, I know the pieces are more expensive, but um, I don't know. I, I, so perhaps we're kind of working under different assumptions, but I, I'm, I'm looking at this stuff under the assumption that uh, ownership will be comparable, but I, I'm seeing like Cincinnati, uh, Las Vegas getting slightly more ownership. Uh, Cause I think like, you know, for the reasons that you discussed, I guess is kind of deterrence, right. Hard to figure out who stands to benefit uh, price sensitivity. I just think like that, that Cincinnati Las Vegas game, the, the stack kind of builds itself, you know, some combination of Waller Higgins, Boyd chase, you know, maybe throw in a, you know, people might get kind of creative and throw in like a Edwards or Zay Jones type thing. Uh, and then of course the quarterback as we're like, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm seeing lower ownership numbers for this, uh, for this Kansas city Dallas game. And, uh, not not like I, super... I don't believe I don't believe our I think I think basically the difference is uh, the ownership that we currently have in on Roto Grinders I don't agree with. Okay, I think I think may end up changing. Uh, we have Mahomes at twelve percent. I'm gonna, a lot of times you know quarterback ownership will affect everyone else. We have yep. Derek Carr at fifty nine hundred at twelve point three percent owned. People don't like playing this guy, right? I do not see Derek Carr being higher owned than Patrick Mahomes on the slate in GPPs. I, I just, I don't, especially in large field GPPs, maybe the sharper players are more on my side and are going to play more of the Las Vegas Bengals game. But I think for the larger field GPPs, I see Mahomes being closer to 15% owned. And I also don't see Tyree Hill only being 12% owned. I think there will be more people that play Hill than play Adams. And we have Adams at higher ownership than Tyreek Hill. So once you start combining those things together, once you start bumping Mahomes' ownership up to 15 and Hill up to 20%, like then the stand, then you start getting more ownership on the Cowboys. Then I think the Cowboys side is going to be the lower owned side. But I think a lot of these Chiefs lineups will have an Amari Cooper run back or a Lamb run back or a Gallup run back because he's the cheapest at 4,200. Uh, which makes the Prescott side of the game more appealing to me. It's just that it's one of those classic situations we see with multi, when we have multiple receivers that are viable, that it feels like I need to build more lineups in order to get all the combinations. And I'm not confident on like, what two guys do I pair up with Dak Prescott? I'm not exactly sure. And then even if I do, if Zeke Elliott vultures two touchdowns from the receivers, like my stack goes down the hill. So like, to me, the higher ownership on the Chiefs that I think there's going to be compared to our current ownership and the 
who knows who gets there for the Cowboys. I just I I think I'd rather I'd rather avoid the situation. I don't mind the one-offs. I don't mind the secondaries. Play Hill plus Cooper. Okay, fine. Without Mahomes or Prescott, and then play another stack in your lineup. Like that's that's where I'm going from. But I can understand that if you're looking at our current ownership, you may think the opposite and go, maybe these guys aren't as high owned as they should be. Yeah. Um, no, I mean our our ownership is is kind of in lockstep with you guys with regards to uh, you know, certainly the, the Cincinnati, uh, Las Vegas game. I mean, I, we, we've got, uh, Higgins chase, you know, Waller all projecting fairly high. Um, but how would you yeah, play? So, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get into that game in a second. Sure. sure. Yeah. But if you so, were to play this Dallas, Kansas city game, like would, would you go that just uh, really straight? If you think that these guys aren't being as high owned as they should be, should you just play it the straightforward way and just go Mahomes Hill, Kelsey, and then Gallup, and then just find value elsewhere in the rest of your lineup. So I, I'm I'm like okay with the Kansas side, but I'm actually inclined to agree with you. Like I, I do prefer the Dallas side uh, slightly more. I just think you know less ownership uh, obviously is a little tougher to to figure out with Gallup uh, back in the mix. But uh, you know, I like I like all those options. I mean Gallup, uh, Cooper, and Lamb, and uh, I, I think I'm going to be fine. Uh, Obviously, yeah, like you said, you're going to have to take more lineups to kind of feel like you have adequate coverage of the uh, possible outcomes. Of course, you know, Elliot could factor in the mix. Um, one game sample, but I mean, Gallup back, Dalton Schultz just kind of disappeared. Uh, so it seems like he could be a guy to just kind of leave out. You know, if, you know, you have to really build a lot of lineups to get coverage of, say, like four potential pass catchers. So um, I, I think I might take the approach of just say, look, if uh, – you know, if if th- that last game was a blip on the radar and Dalton Schultz is meant to be more a part of the offense than uh, indicated last week, you know, that's going to that's going to suck for, you know, my kind of combinations of Lamb, Gallup, uh, Cooper, but uh, willing, willing to take, I think, those shots. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, Mahomes, Kansas City, like uh, all those guys. Project well. Uh, obviously, have a huge ceiling. Uh, I I kind of prefer the Dallas value a little more. Uh, but I think Kelsey is just like uh, you know the uh, kind of uh, could be kind of a keystone like building piece. Uh, just fill out that tight end position, correlate it well with essentially the game environment. Uh, you know, use him as the bring back. That way, you know, you, you have kind of one of the premier Kansas City pieces, but aren't kind of locked into uh, you know spending heavy on you know, two, three guys uh, on the Kansas city side, uh, th- that would be kind of my preferred approach uh, to, to take with this game. All the other game that we were talking about is the Bengals at the Raiders 50 and a half total. Uh, the Bengals are currently one point favorites on the road, 25 and a half team total or 25 and a half. Yeah, it looks like 26 team total for the Bengals, uh, 25, 24 and a half for the Raiders. Uh, we all have a lot, of, a lot of options in this game. You could easily do the Burrow, Burrow plus two of Higgins, Chase, or Boyd. Uh, and then you have, to me, it's easier on the Raiders' side. Just do Carr, Renfro, Waller, you're done. Uh, but I also like this game from a leverage perspective, that if you believe that this game is too high owned, like I, I, I'm, I'm with the assumption that this ownership starts coming down, I don't see Tyler Boyd being 15% though. I just don't, I just don't see that happening. 8%. I don't see Hunter rent from now at 5,800 being double digit owned. I see Higgins being owned. I see Higgins. Okay. 20%. I give it, give him that chase. I could see 10 to 12. I get that. Uh, Waller. If maybe people may just pay up that other thousand for Kelsey. So 12%. Hmm, okay. I could see that, but you also have leverage that if you believe that, that they're going to be over owned, Joe Mixon and Josh Jacobs are going to be single digit owned in this game. And uh, they don't project that poorly. And if this game goes 50 and a half, you know, 51 total, the way to suck all the value out of the stacks. I mean, we have two running backs that have put up, you know, 30 plus points in the past that like, I could see myself playing both sides of this. I could see myself if I'm playing 20 lineups, you know, playing, four borough stacks, four car stacks, and then four lineups with Mixon and four lineups with Jacobs and just like bet on the game as a whole. And I personally, I think obviously the stacks are going to be lower on than we have it currently, 
Uh, but that all I don't see Mixon and Jacobs ownership getting in the double digits, regardless of what happens. Yeah, I, I think those running backs are intriguing spots. I mean, um, I was looking through, we have like a, what we call a team pulse app, just kind of gives you some uh, uh, metrics parameters around some of these teams, um, their coaching staffs. And like, I, you know, I typically think of like Las Vegas and Cincinnati as being kind of poor defenses, but I mean, it, both these teams have been quite good against the pass this year. I think we have the Raiders is allowing the second fewest pass yards uh, per, per attempt. The Bengals are inside the top 10 or I guess bottom 10 uh, top, top 10, if you're looking, you know, sorting by fewest. Um, and it does kind of feel like the running, the running game is maybe where these uh, defenses are a little more susceptible. So I guess the, the way I was looking at it is between what I suspect will be, you know, fairly strong ownership on the game and, uh, you know, potentially a uh, over, uh, sorry, un, kind of underestimated pass defense of, of really both these sides that kind of just sets up for a spot that I would like to uh, be underweight on, uh, maybe, you know, maybe take individual pieces, but uh, not, not like a, a game or sides that I want to stack up. Uh, I, I, so I mentioned at the top, like I'm kind of lukewarm on the Las Vegas side. I think, you know, there's there's a bit more of a case to be made there just because I don't think they'll have uh, quite the ownership that the Cincinnati receivers will have. Um, but yeah, the Cincinnati side, I mean, I just, I just think like Las Vegas could be a tough matchup for them. Um, and they're, they're going to come in at pretty high ownership, not like huge price discounts or anything. Uh, to me, like the, those, those kind of add up to a spot that I would like to be underweight on. Uh, yeah, the, the running backs are interesting. I mean, Jacobs, Mixon, uh, not going to get huge ownership. Uh, you know, both both these teams fairly attackable on the ground. Uh, wouldn't want to play them across from one another as like, uh, you know, a secondary, you know, running back versus running back. Both these guys are, you know, so, so ground dependent that I just don't really see a situation where they both get there. Um, but, you know, could see something like, uh, I don't know, Waller, Mixon or, uh, you know, Boyd Higgins, Chase, one of Boyd Higgins Chase versus Jacobs, something like that. Uh, you know, maybe what might be one way to get exposure because you know there there is a dearth of kind of high total games, and uh, this is one of the good ones. And Vegas is projecting it's going to be one of the stronger games, so uh, not so much a spot you know to X out completely. But um, I don't know. That's kind of how I'm seeing this game. Uh, yeah, out of the remaining ten games, uh, what well, what what would be the go over pluses and minuses? Uh, compared to projected ownership, uh, what would what would you consider as one of the plus games on the slate? Um, so we we have Tennessee uh, as, as a pass stack, kind of showing up uh, towards the top of uh, you know simulated value. Uh, obviously, kind of one of these one sided matchups where they've just got you know a strong implied total going up against Houston, uh, but you know with no. Uh, with no Derrick Henry, like, you know, there's kind of, you, you maybe could theorize that they might not go as uh, run heavy from ahead uh, as in, uh, you know, instances where Henry's playing uh, some pretty intriguing, I think uh, stacking options like Brown is kind of the uh, obvious one uh, just given massive ceiling. It's not super, he's not cheap this week, uh, but we're not, we're not projecting huge ownership on him. Uh, Marcus Johnson kind of near, near min price um, or, you know, min, min price receiver uh, should, should have, you know, some, some role this week with uh, no Julio. Uh, don't think he's like going to fly under the radar radar. I could see him being kind of a uh, trendy, like, uh, you know, low, low cost uh, type receiver, but uh, you know, assuming he's kind of uh, ha has a role of substance in the game uh, that that could be, kind of additional if you wanted like double stack Tannehill Brown Johnson uh, I think that would be something I'd be comfortable with uh you know a tough kind of decision point here is like do you bring back someone uh from Houston I have a little more trust in Tyrod Taylor than Davis Mills so you know considering like a Brandon Cooks bring back um is something I, I am inclined to do uh but definitely don't think like a Houston bring back is necessary in this spot I agree with you with this. What makes this stack appealing is that it mitigates the ownership of Marcus Johnson. Like I'm, I'm not a big fan typically in GPPs of playing chalky value running uh, wide receivers 
I don't mind the chalky value running backs, but the chalky value wide receivers uh, have a much higher bust rate than any than anyone else. So if we see Marcus Johnson coming in at 15 to 20 percent owned, he's one of those guys where maybe I don't want to play as a one off. But in the combination of a Tannehill Brown Johnson Cooks game stack, like if Marcus Johnson goes off and the game goes off, I'm going to have lineups that have Cooks and Tan. I'm going to have other pieces that are correlated to Marcus Johnson that Marcus Johnson one-off lineups won't have. So to me, that's what makes this stack more appealing. I'm lukewarm on the game as a whole, but uh, I think you've you've sold me on on yeah they have a 27 plus team total and uh you know their running game is kind of like foreman and peterson and you know maybe and it's the houston defense so maybe you know they could run up the score 42 points or something and maybe you don't need a run back but i mean if marcus johnson was lower owned then i'd love it more but to me it feels like a way to play marcus johnson in a in a non shocky way so uh so i'm perfectly fine with it and I also like Tan- like Tannehill has been a, I mean, Tennessee, even when Henry has been in the lineup, like they sometimes use utilize Tannehill around the goal line. And with no, um, I, I kind of think of Foreman as like a kind of bruising uh, between the tackles, North South guy um, Peterson as well. Just, I don't think has that kind of side to side speed anymore, but uh, you know, could see, could see Tennessee. Uh, like I do think Tannehill has more rushing equity than uh, people tend to give him credit for um what do you i mean it's always a a kind of tough decision point and i don't know that i've landed on kind of a a, uh general heuristic for for deciding on this but you know bringing back some of these uh some of these teams you know the texans the jets have been kind of a point of discussion as you know all right is this this a team we really want to or need to bring someone back uh from like how, how do you see that shaping out this week are you seeing i just go by i just go by projections i mean like (laughs) <laughs> like it really comes comes down to is the alternative option at that run back type of position. Can I get a better projected guy at a lower own guy? Like Brandon cooks at 6,000 projects. Well, we have him in the gridiron IQ projections as 16.15, 18% ownership. I'm not necessarily say I agree with that. Uh, it just comes down to if I don't play the run back there, do I play what DJ Moore there instead? Do I play, Higgins there instead, like what other guy, like someone else is going to be there. So is the opportunity cost of playing the correlated piece worth it? And I think at his current projection, I don't mind cooks, but if we take a look at a a team like the jets and it's like, do I play Corey Davis? It's like, he doesn't project that well. Like none of, none of the jets receivers reject that well, that if I do play a Miami stack, which I'm I'm not inclined to uh, on this slate, particularly, that like playing Corey Davis at 5K, there is an option. I'm going to be sacrificing two or three points of projection just to have the correlated piece that it may not be worth it. So like, to me, that's the heuristic. It's not a, it's, I don't think in terms of, does this team have to push the ball? I don't think in football terms, I just assume all the football stuff is in the projections. It's just like, if they're, if they have high, if it, the other side of the game is also well projected, then I'm going to end up with more runbacks. And if the other side of the game isn't as well projected, I end up with, with less of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about you uh, games that are standing out as spots Plus? to be over? I mean, I, to me, I think that the best games on the slate are all three late games. So like I consider a plus uh, the prices have come down. Uh, I mean, I'll just, uh, it's the type of stack that if you just played every week, I think you get it right at least once and win a lot of money. Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. I mean, they're cheap enough now. Metcalf at 6,800 and Lockett at 6,000. You have a run back on the other side with James Conner, right? You could obviously, obviously, uh, Hopkins is out. So maybe you could get away with a Christian Kirk or an AJ Green, maybe Rondell Moore, something like that. But I think just the, the upside of Russell Wilson Lockett and Metcalf. I mean, they've, I, I, you can't, yes, Pete Carroll likes running the ball a little too much, but we've seen Russell Wilson put up 250 yards and five touchdowns. So, like, I wouldn't put it past him. Is it this game? I have no idea. But at this ownership, 
like, I don't, I don't, why not take a shot? Why not take a shot on, on a double Russ Wilson double stack? And, you know, I did it last week and that obviously did not work. <laughs> uh, but it, it, there, I view Russell Wilson very similar to like a Josh Allen. May, obviously, Josh Allen is a much higher upside the way that that, that offense is run. But just talent wise, that the talent of that, those three guys, if they put up 40 points in any game, I'm like shocked. It's just a matter of they'll do it once or twice a season and you don't know what game it's going to be. So I'm going to tend to play it at lower ownership. So I view, I view the Seattle side as, as the plus, but more of a large field GPP play and not necessarily like a core piece of like single entry builds. Yeah. We don't have great scores on the Seattle side and it, 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 when I when I look at it, I mean, yes, it's like this is as cheap uh, as you've been able to get Metcalf plus Lockett in quite some time. Uh, condensed, you know, the 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 ceilings on these guys are are known to be quite high. It's just like so far this year, like they they have really struggled to achieve that ceiling on a consistent basis. But um, yeah, they are going to come in at low ownership. Um, we actually like from the game, uh, the running backs, obviously Connor, but uh, Alex Collins at the uh, 500. Um, you know, obviously Seattle is two, two point dog. So, you know, not projected to be playing from ahead, quote unquote, but like, I don't think two points is a huge spread to cover. And uh, yeah, assuming like Chris Carson isn't back, which I think feels like a pretty safe assumption. Like it's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of touches, runs potentially for for Collins also a, a somewhat of a factor in the past game so, so we haven't scored uh reasonably well um before we jump to minuses there there are a couple games that I'm just like a bit perplexed by like I I want to find ways to like um don't tell me know. it's the Browns please don't tell me it's no, the no 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 um they're <laughs> like at this point, like I, I just it, it it doesn't make our it doesn't make sense to like our numbers and our model, but like I I I'm kind of just trying to adopt like a redact the Browns at uh at all costs uh approach. But uh man, it's like I want to go, you know, be open to like going back to Josh Allen or like Lamar Jackson at low ownership. I, I think uh the Bears and Colts defenses aren't quite as good as uh people believe them to be, but I mean, they're just so expensive, right? Like they're, 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 neither of these sides are showing up particularly well uh, in our numbers. I mean, particularly like the prices have come up on the quarterbacks digs prices is, is, you know, back up to kind of where it had been living early in the season last year, like Marquise Brown's price is, is way up. Um, Andrew's price hasn't really been inflated, but like his role hasn't been quite as strong uh, as it has been in the past. Um so I don't know. It's like, I want to like these spots, but they're, they're certainly not projecting well in, uh, in our runs. And uh, I'm guessing it's just like a price sensitivity thing. Um, is that, is that kind of. Yeah. Well, it's seem... also price sensitivity on both sides of the game. So like, if you take a look at the Indianapolis side, like the Colts only have a 21 implied team total against the bills. And they're, I mean, Taylor at 8,300 and Pittman at 6,100. Like these prices were fine when the Indy was at home and favored by five points, six points. But now, like, they're they're not priced for this situation. So it makes me not want to play the Colts. And like you said, the Buff- Buffalo's priced up. I mean, yeah, can you get away with Allen Diggs Beasley? Sure, I guess. Uh, but I, I think that the, the, the games are just overpriced. Like, and the same thing for Baltimore. Uh, we just got news that Allen Robinson is now doubtful. So maybe that adds some uh, little value to maybe like a Darnell Mooney, but it almost feels like I'm taking a look at the Baltimore Chicago game. And I almost prefer the Chicago side to the Baltimore side from a projection standpoint. It's just that like Marquise Brown is 7,100 now, like Sammy Watkins is back and Rashad Bateman is 4,500. So like, while I don't mind Lamar Jackson himself as a quarterback, uh, it almost feels like if I do play Lamar, I'd rather play him naked than play with any than pair him up with anyone because I think most of his teammates are overpriced for their for their projection. And Baltimore really only has a 25 implied team total. Like these prices would be fine if they had a 29, 30 point implied team total. So yeah, like I would consider both games to be minuses, but not like I think their ownership is on par with that what they're like. It's I don't think they're over owned. I don't think they're under owned. I think just that they're black. 
and they're getting black ownership because of it. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, I guess I, I see them as minuses and I, I, I want to try to find like, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, Lamar Jackson at, you know, single digit ownership and like, not even like high single digit. And we have them, I think like 4% or something more times than not, that's going to be a spot. Like I want to attack, but, uh, yeah, I mean, no, I, I'm with you. Like, uh, to me, like Andrews is really the only Baltimore skill player that I could even stomach playing. I mean, uh, Brown at 7,100 is just a lot. Um, let's see. What, what, uh, what are your we... thoughts? What, what are your thoughts? Another game. I don't know if this is, a, I don't, this is one of these games. I don't know if it's a minus and I don't know if it's a plus. It's, 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 it's one or the other, but I don't know which one it is. Is Green Bay, Minnesota. Okay. AJ Dillon is going to be probably the chalkiest running back on the slate. Devontae Adams is going to be one of the chalkiest wide receivers on the slate. It makes sense that if you're going to play them both, why not play Aaron Rodgers in that lineup? Then we have Minnesota on the other side and Thielen and Jefferson. Jefferson's now priced up to 8,100. Thielen 6,600. Cook's 8,200. Like these, these teams have very condensed offenses. It makes me want to say, why don't I just play like Rodgers, Adams, Dylan, Cook, or just one of the Vikings, even Tyler Conklin, or play Cousins, Cousins, Thielen, Conklin with Adams or Dylan. It seems like a good way to mitigate the ownership of the two chalky Packers guys. But like, do I gain more value by having lineups that don't have Packers in them? And we've seen that the Packers play very slow. And their players hit their ceilings when the game is higher paced and faster play, like, you know, you know, higher score, like Justin Jefferson's getting an 80 yard bomb or, you know, something like that, that it would it be better off playing lineups without Dylan and without Adams. And if, if Dylan or Adams don't have a ceiling, it's most likely the the Vikings guys don't hit a ceiling either. Right. Like it's one of those games where if the game goes off, yes, all these pieces together could work out. But if the game doesn't go off, all the pieces fail. And I think I gain with the ownership of Dylan and Adams, I think I gain more by the game failing than by the game succeeding. But I could see a case where you're like, well, if Dylan's going to be so high owned, why don't you just pair him with a low owned Adam Thielen and just mitigate that ownership? Like I, I, I get that point also. So it's like, to me, it could be a plus, it could be a minus. And I don't know where you have, have uh, both teams uh, on your side of the ball. Yeah. So, so we have a pretty strong minus on the green Bay side and kind of lukewarm slight minus on the Minnesota side. One thing that like, at least our model will, will not, um, I guess consider is like, so, so I think one thing that potentially is bringing this game down uh, from the way, like we're running things is that green Bay is just super slow. I mean, they're slowest team in the league, most, you know, Highest average, uh, like one thing I just look at as you know, average time between plays uh, for an offense. Green Bay, you know, highest in the league, essentially taking the most time between plays by a pretty wide margin, by like almost half a second um, over the next slowest team, Cincinnati. Um, so, you know, I guess we talk about like, well, Henry's gone. So maybe that kind of changes how Tennessee uh, approaches and runs their offense. You know, I think a question that, uh, our model has, you know, the way our model is set up, you know, has decided that the absence of Aaron Jones won't have a material impact on, uh, you know, the, the 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 run frequency, kind of the pace at which the team plays. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I have a strong stance on if that is the correct approach. Uh, to me, Derrick Henry is like such a um, core kind of offensive, like, building like he you know he is he is the feature piece of that offense where it seems more likely than say Aaron Jones uh that his absence would materially change like how uh you know the pace uh the the play calling I guess of the team um so I don't know I, I guess you could make the case that like if you think that Jones being out is going to skew Green Bay more more pass heavy or you know, Aaron Rodgers is going to try to speed things up a little more. Uh, you know, maybe those are kind of instances where uh, at least the modeling approach that we use. And, you know, I think any, any uh, model that isn't like making manual tweets to tweaks to stuff like pace, uh, run frequency, uh, et cetera, um, you know, could, could see that being kind of like a blind spot and maybe a, a, uh, 
I guess like optimistic case for for why kind of that that uh, the game could go a little better than uh, than at least our numbers are suggesting. Okay. Do you have a do you have a minus game? Yeah, I mean, uh, Cincinnati, uh, I touched on, it's not really the game, more so side. Uh, Las Vegas, like I said, kind of lukewarm on. Um, let's see, as I look through here, I don't know. I think, uh, like, I don't think Miami is going to be super popular, but not really like a stack that I'm super interested in uh, putting a lot of trust in. I mean, A, just like the fluidity they've had at quarterback. Like, I think, you know, two has got to have one of the lower – uh, probabilities to finish the game uh, among starting quarterbacks. Uh, certainly, you know, if you if you scale it to price point, like obviously uh, guys like uh, Flacco or um, I don't know, uh, Jimmy G, uh, Newton, you know, I don't know. There, there's some other guys who could kind of have an early hook, but it seems to me like Tua, uh, I just don't have a whole ton of faith in him, like uh, kind of completing the game. Um and I don't know. I don't think like they're going to catch a ton, a ton of ownership, but we have them uh, you know, numbers suggest that they might get a little more ownership than uh, is probably warranted given their value relative ceilings of these players, et cetera. Like, Gas- I mean, Gaskin is a guy I'm moderately interested in, but I don't really see him as part of a, uh, I guess he could be part of a two stack, but um, I think I'd be far more interested in looking at him as just like a, a one-off uh, probably one off. Like I'm not that interested in doing like Gaskin, Corey Davis, kind of as you alluded to earlier. Just not super excited about the Jets side. Uh, the game that I have as the the biggest uh, minus, uh, New Orleans, Philadelphia. I have up there. I, I think I'm more inclined to play if uh, Kamara's out. So like Ingram is viable, but I don't like the the pace of that game as in a whole as a whole. Uh, but to me, the biggest minus is Cleveland. They have a 27 and a half team total. Uh, if Landry is going to be 10% owned, good luck with that. Just good luck. People, good luck with Jarvis Landry. <laughs> Have the same amount of fun that I've had playing him the past six weeks. You ain't getting there. It ain't happening. So, like, good luck. Good luck on that. And if uh, if a $7,800 Nick Chubb beats me, he beat, I mean, like, it's just, it's one of those things that we haven't projected on at 12%. These teams, like Detroit, like, they're, gonna, they're not going to have golf in. And even with Goff, they were running the ball way too much. Cleveland runs the ball way too much. Uh, so where, where do I go in this? I mean, uh, to me, the bets, but the piece of the game I like the most is DeAndre Swift, even though he's on the dog side uh, for a ceiling. But I'm not going to play Chubb and Swift against each other. I'm not going to play Landry. You have the tight ends. I, don't, I mean, it's just like. Like, just get me away from the Cleveland Browns games as much as possible. I don't, I don't, I do not want to. Yeah, I'll play Dearness Johnson, but he's 4,700. I'll, I'll do that. But now that I'm, I don't play Nick Jubb at 7,000. So I'm not playing him at 7,800. So I'm sorry, I'm surprised that, you know, you, I'm not going to have, I hope you don't have one of those obligatory Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry, David and Joku stacks with Swift as a run back. If that wins the Millie, then I'm just not going to win this week. Yeah, no, that I, I'm, I think just going to have to take a hard, like just redact, uh, redact Cleveland stance. Cause um, yeah, they, they, they've cost me a lot of money um, <laughs> and, and not like, it, it's one thing, you know, it's, it hurts, but like, you know, it, it, it happens, you know, just uh, weeks where you're like, all, like I, I've had a hard time with Josh Allen, just not uh, playing him too much, but just kind of like, just, just not getting the right weeks, not, not kind of figuring it out um, that, you know, that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, at a certain point, like um, you know, can only, can only go back to the well so many times. Um, I think Josh the, Allen is worth going to the well for Baker Mayfield is. Yeah, no, no, of course, of course, of course. Um, yeah. I just, I've just gone to the well kind of the wrong, uh, the wrong times. Um, and one, one just like, I guess it would just be a mega, mega vomit stack, but uh showing up uh and i mean uh, i I, i'm not sure that i can justify uh even with prices kind of considered uh houston at oh i don't even know what their implied total is what would that be uh 17 uh, 17 something like that so uh, so you'd rather tyrod taylor i thought you were going to mention cam newton no so we we actually have a, a fairly strong negative on uh carolina um Guess just not that optimistic about Cam's ceiling. 
Um, also, his playing time. We we saw today uh, that uh, rule said that uh, that it's, that PJ Walker is also going to play. Got it. Um, so like, yeah, I, I'm that... never I'm never a big fan of rostering quarterbacks that may not play like like every snap because uh, you never. I mean, like, yeah, if between the two, PJ Walker and Cam Newton, Cam Newton obviously has goal line. Like, yes, he has more upside, but like. What happens if he only plays half the snaps? Like, do I really want to play a quarterback that's going to play half the snaps? Like, I don't play Taysom Hill, so why should I play Cam Newton? So I, it, I would think that maybe that's the reason why Carolina. But I mean, McCaffrey and DJ Moore, I mean, I don't consider it to be bad uh, individual one-offs. But I, I thought maybe you'd be lower on on Carolina. I thought I thought maybe you'd be higher on Carolina than than I would be for for the for the stack. Because you could play mm. Newton McCaffrey more. What's wrong with that? It's priced decently enough. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, the 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 skill players, I think, make sense. Um, I don't know. It's uh, I wasn't aware of the uh, kind of potential uh, split duty that to me seemed like for the same reason I am not interested in Tua because I think there's a chance that he might not play the whole game. Like if if there's going to be news that comes out that cam like is unlikely to play the full game like yeah i i um i don't know I, i'm not not super interested in playing yeah a quarterback that that isn't going to be on the field for ideally 100 percent of snaps you know uh certainly fine with playing josh allen against a team where he might get yanked in the you know halfway through the fourth quarter because he's getting yanked halfway through the fourth quarter. He's probably did something right in the previous three and a half quarters um but it seems like cam's exit uh exit scenario is not linked to him doing well it's actually linked to him doing poorly so um well it's, it's more know. play by it's more the fact that that because he may not know the entire playbook that like newton will be in like maybe in the red zone but in between the 20s it's pj walker and then you're sitting there going God, i hope newton scores three touchdowns because he ain't, surely ain't getting the 300 yard bonus he surely ain't throw. I mean, like, it's just like you caps your ceiling. Like, you can't, it's, it's the same reason. Why do you play Taysom Hill at quarterback when he's like, no, you don't. Like, you play Trevor Simeon, if anything, but then you don't play Simeon because Taysom Hill comes in at the 10 yard line and the ruins, ruins everyone. So, like, like I view Cam Newton in the same in the same light as that. So it, it makes him hard to make a stack. Because remember, if you're stacking people with them, he's throwing him them the ball. But I don't want Cam Newton's. Like, oh, well, if, if uh, DJ Moore gets them there, it's because P.J. Walker threw him a touchdown. It's like, then what was the hell is the point of the stack then? Yeah. Yeah, and like, I mean, look, if uh, Carolina had a 50, or, you know, if the game total was 53, uh, you know, there's... Who are they error. playing where the Carolina Panthers would have a game total? Yeah, no, 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 they don't. But, I mean, the community there, there, was, <laughs> there was a time and place where Taysom Hill was a part of a Saints team that, like, could play in 53 total games and you know it's like his role is so far kind of off the um off what you're looking for that i mean he was never in play and in, in kind of actual uh uh you know classic full slate contest but well unless um, when, when unless he was on fan and it was tight end right exactly of course right. of course of course <laughs> or when he was i mean look when he was when he was the starting qb for uh yeah when he's the starter it? starter right yeah, i mean yeah, we're talking yeah. about when he's the the guy that you say oh why oh who's this guy like all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah. it's not, oh, it's Taysom Hill. Oh, it's his me. By God, it's his music type of thing. Yeah. And then, oh, and typically that always happens when you have Kamara in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, one, one, one game or at least side I do want to keep an eye on with that uh, Robinson news. Like we do have Chicago grading out as not exceptional, but, you know, like you said, kind of better, more preferential uh, than Baltimore and, would be interested to see how uh, right right now we we're pretty high in David Montgomery. Um, would be interested to see though if uh, Chicago kind of climbs climbs the chart a little bit uh, as we update for that uh, Robinson news. Yeah, I'm, I'm less likely to play this game as a stack. I'm more likely to like okay, take Montgomery, take Mooney, like one offs because I mean I don't like anyone on the Baltimore side outside of Lamar Jackson. So I mean. So what do you do then? So like, yeah, okay, I could, I could see, I could see one offs like that, but uh, yeah, but you'll have. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, no, that. Uh, so what about? I mean, it's pretty out there, but what about like a Lamar naked bring back of 
probably not demont but say like mooney or something like that uh, i just don't build uh, those the, types of, i just don't yeah, build those. New, I, new, it's I mean, vi yes it's viable yes it's just that i traditionally don't build those types of lineups yeah not likewise but i want to um, poo poo it it's just that i tend to not build those types of lineups uh yeah. you'll have all this uh information and all the, the stats behind this in the, in the, the sub stack which you can get yeah. at uh, advancedsportsanalytics.com and uh and your your script your script is done. It's 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 all it's all gone through. With. Did you find yeah. did you find out what happened last week where it, it took so so long? Yeah, down I downloaded the uh, Thursday to Monday CSV and uh, that crashed things. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like uh, merging data frames, but we we're we we're getting essentially uh, mer you know merge du duplicates of players such that a merge was. Uh, turning what should be like a, you know, 60,000 or so uh, row data frame or table into like a 60 million or, you know, I don't know. Right. Right. Tens of hundreds of millions. So. Right. Or, or it gets stuck or it gets stuck in a never ending loop of replacing data that it already has over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's um, maybe me because I'm horrible at it. Got it. No, <laughs> I, it's not. No, it was, it was, I, I couldn't exactly figure out why it was crashing, but it, it was, somehow related to the having the wrong csv once i fix that up got it okay got it to go so uh, so yes. people could pick that sub stack up uh they subscribe to advanced sports analytics right yeah subscribe to advanced sports analytics that'll get you access to the sub stack pretty much the contents of that article just uh you know native in kind of the the, the website uh but we do have like a sub stack native uh subscription it's unfortunate that the, you can't merge the two but um so yeah, you can, the, the, it just the, takes it just crashes. It takes forever, right? <laughs> yeah, not, not that type of merge, but um, um, you could do it from Thursday to Monday, but just not in, but not on any of the other days. Yeah, yeah. I'm making um, I'm making script crashing jokes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So so the the, the Substack one is just for the article, kind of the cliff notes, if you will, of kind of uh, our tools and you know aggregating things like correlation, uh, range of outcomes, distributions uh ownership projections mean projections all that stuff you know kind of the condensed cliff notes not dumbed down but uh just condensed version uh that's cheap think ten dollars a month uh or you can sub to the site get access to that article as well as the tools that uh you know that that uh article and a lot of the data that kind of we talk about on the show uh, co uh comes from so uh, yeah you can follow advanced sports analytics on twitter as analytics dfs Feel free to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. You give me those thummy thumbs. And uh, if you're on the fantasy, uh, the, our, the Roto Grinders Daily Fantasy fo Football podcast feed, feel free to uh, go and rate and review it on iTunes. So for, uh, for Stuart Gibson, I'm Jordan Cooper. This has been another, another edition of the Advanced Sports Analytics Show here on rotogrinders.com. <laughs>